The HA1G CPS has a lot going for it. And the latest firmware update definitely makes this a better radio. The HA1G GMRS Handheld Transceiver CPS is a very nice little app, especially when compared to other factory customer programming software packages. In this video, we'll take a deep dive as well as show you how to upgrade your HA1G's firmware. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of gadgets that catch my eye. If you find this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you found other Gadget Talk videos helpful, click the join button below the video to see a short video describing why you might want to become a channel member. You commit to nothing by watching that video. I really appreciate it. The Redivus CPS and firmware downloads are available on the Redivus website. Here's a link to the download page along with a screenshot. I'll have it in the video description below too. I'm going to assume that you already know how to uncompress a zip file and install basic apps. 7-Zip is a free download that will do the extracting if you don't already have one on your Windows computer. The firmware's most notable improvements are font color changes to make the screens easier to read and updates to some small pop-up status boxes to make them easier to see too. Let's start with the CPS as I recorded that before upgrading the firmware. So let's take a quick look at the CPS for the Alance HA1G. We've got that here on the screen and up at the top you can see we've got the typical Windows drop down menus, file, open, save, the device, read and write, a new node, Chinese, English, window for a new window, help about and that kind of thing. And then these icons here represent some of those same things from the drop down menus. Now the first thing I'm going to do as I always do is I'm going to double check this from my device manager and see what COM port the USB is. And in this case, it's COM port 4. It's the CH340. And we'll uh, be using that and we'll set that up. So that's where we're going to start. So as we look through, there's we got the file open, the device, and so forth. And there's not a COM port setting up here, but it is when you start to run the radio. So that's more similar to what you'd get from Chirp. And so we're going to hit read from the radio. And we've got COM port 4 set. We've got the HA1G. This CPS will work with a number of Redivus radios. And so we're going to hit OK. And you can see there the radio is blinking. And then there's a little pop-up window that says that uh, it's reading. It's all complete. And so now when it opens up, we get the, the data version, the model, and the software version, and it's 1.09.001, and uh, the hardware version is 01. Now we're interested in when we start out with normally uh, with the channels, and you can see this display is a little different. So we've got all of the channels that we've got in there listed, uh, and these go from channel uh, VFOA all the way down to channel 50. And then when you add channels by right clicking here, you can add a new channel to get up to that total of 256, but they're not all going to display to start. And don't get confused about that. I had to track that down for a moment or two. We can go into channel and then we can see this display of all of our channels. And you can see we've got all the GMRS channels. We've got the interstitial channels here on low. And then all of that information is right here. Uh, we have checkboxes for scramble, which is not legal in this country. A compander, which is the uh, compressor expander function that gives you a better dynamic range of your voice, enabling Vox, auto scan, and, and the other information that is here. Now, the other thing we can do then is we can make changes to CT, CSS codes, and so forth. You see, this one has 100 in it. Uh, that's because I was playing around with it with the radio. But if I double click on it, I can go in here, uh, scroll up and close it. And then now it shows the zero. And so uh, those are all of our 
uh, channels that we have right here. Now notice channels 32 through 50 down here are all set at that you know standard uh, frequency because there's nothing programmed in there. So to make a programming change, channel 31, for example, I want to put wide, high, and then I want to make this one uh, receive on 462.7250. So I'm going to add 462.7250. And then over here, I want it to be a repeat of repeater number 8. So I'm going to highlight this one. I'm going to go 467, 7250, which is the plus 5 megahertz offset for repeaters in GMRS. So I got 467, and the one I want to use, I know has an input of 100. I had that there before. So I'm going to put that CTCSS code on the transmit for um, 100. And then the rest of this stuff I'm going to uh, leave alone. I'm not going to mess with that. Uh, however, what I can do over here is double click and give it a name. And so I'm going to highlight that. And this is the Shaw Butte uh, 725 repeater here in the Phoenix area. So I'm going to call it Shaw 725. And so that's how we can add all the frequencies here into these um, channels, just drop down box. Or uh, if we wanted to make a change another way, and you can see SHA-725 is down there already, if we were to just click on a particular channel, then this dialog box would come in and you could make it change by change. So if you want to use the big spreadsheet or if you want to use individual channels, both are available here. Now, in the zone area, we've got uh, a couple of different zones. And so if we wanted to click on zone one, we could click. And they only hold 16 channels. And so you can see as it comes out of the box, the member list or the members of this zone are GMRS channels one through 16. If we go to channel two or zone two, click, we've got the rest of them, GMRS 17 through repeater number eight. Now you can add zones easily, just right click there and add a new zone by clicking new. And then you can put the channels in the zone that are important to you. So for example, if you like to go out camping and you've got some GMRS stuff and you use channels, you know, two, five, and seven to keep track of the kids, you could put them in zone three. If you like to go to your mother-in-law's, you could put in the, the channels that are appropriate there, or maybe a couple of GMRS repeaters that are in this different town or different city. And so the zone allows you to uh, break up this uh, list of 200 or so channels into meaningful bytes. So they're not a process of scanning through all of 200. You can just kind of focus in on the ones you want. So I've offered that comment uh, and request to other vendors. And it's nice to see that Red of Us has added this ability to subdivide all of their channels into zones. You know, a couple of recent radios are doing that. And so I think that's an excellent thing. Now we go up into basic settings um, and we can go into basic information. We That's where it came up. But then in our settings, this gives us the opportunity to make changes to some of the menu items. And so we can put in a password, uh, power on password. I don't want passwords. We want this to come up in dual mode. So it says band A and band B uh, on power on. We're going to keep it as what it was when it was turned off, as opposed to always starting on channel one, for example. Band A is going to come up in all channel. Band B is going to come up in all channel. But if I wanted to, I could have band B come up in zone three. Um, it was just a matter of uh, picking it. Now, I didn't make that zone three, so it's not available here. But if I wanted to come up in zone two, I could do that. So that's really easy uh, to make those channels. And then uh, we can have uh, the, the Roger beep, the key beep I've got, voice prompt I've got. And then um, battery saving mode, it's got one to two. Its choices are one to two and one to four. The stun mode is set to normal. Mic gain's normal. Mic gain is a handy setting to have in these kinds of radios. Uh, instead of rating, you know, one to nine or something, it's just low, normal, and uh, strengthened. And so these are the various things that you can set in the CPS. And this is a pretty handsome CPS. This display kind of reminds of the new version of Chirp with uh, smaller fonts and larger uh, rows. 
And so there's some familiarity there. And then so with all of this done, then I can uh, I've made a couple changes. I added that channel down there. And so I can go up here. I store these online. And so I've got a new one. It comes up with a suggested name. I'm going to take that suggestion because it reflects today's date. So I'm going to save it. Again, COM4. OK. You want to write it? Yes, I do. And that information is writing back to the radio. It's only going to take a couple of seconds because, frankly, we don't have, you know, 200 channels worth of data. But you can see the small pop-up window is there. It's done writing. I'm going to click OK. The radio reboots. And now we've reprogrammed the radio with those additional channels. So that's a quick overview of the Redivus CPS. Now, let's upgrade the firmware. OK, so here is the upgrade tool from Redivus for the HA1G. And the way this is going to work is really pretty simple. When it came up, since I had the bin file here in the same folder as the upgrade tool, it found it and loaded that path to it. You may have to navigate to find it, but if you keep them in the same place, it's going to come up. The other thing we're going to do is what we always do is we double check in our device manager that the USB port that this radio is using is identified and that's COM port 4. So I'm going to use that. So we see that we've got COM port 4 up here. And so we're about ready to upgrade. And so here you can see I've got the radio and we've got the radio plugged into the programming cable. And to get this into update mode, we're going to press and hold the side key 1, the push to talk, and then we're going to turn it on. And since I can't do all of that and hold the camera at the same time, uh, let me get it into update mode and I'll show you what that looks like. So you can see as I turn that on, uh, the green light came on for a minute and then now the red light is on. And so that's the update mode that we need on our radio. And you can see the radio has a green light with it now since the connection has been made. And you can also see that they're writing data. You can also see the progress bar is going across the bottom of the screen to give us an indication of that the update is actually happening. It says the write was successful, so we'll click OK. And now the radio is rebooted. And one of the primary indicators that we have that was successful is that the font on the dark blue is now bright white. And that's one of the big changes along with some size and colors of the uh, pop-up windows. And we'll take a look at that here in just a second. I know a lot of you are fans of Chirp, and rightly so. However, the HA1G is not yet supported by Chirp. But, as you saw, the Red of a CPS has an easy-to-use, worthy replacement. Yes, it can't import the stock configurations, but in terms of managing your radio, it does quite well. As for the firmware, I had a few little fits and start getting it to load, but once I did everything in the right order, it worked just fine. The main thing is to do the two-button power-on procedure after clicking the upgrade button on the uploader with that little countdown timer running. If you found this video tutorial helpful, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. Helpful comments are always welcome. Join me over here for my GMRS playlist with lots of interesting GMRS reviews and topics. Thanks for watching.